The horizontal stabilizers on the Zero are permanently attached, so I'm using the long setup time Epo Grip Epoxy to get the maximum strength. The kit came with a template that I used for drilling the holes you see in the stabilizer and there's corresponding holes in the fuselage. I've already inserted the aluminum spar tube for the horizontal stabilizers and just have to slide the second one and make sure that it seats firmly. A big thing I like about the Eco Grip Epoxies is that they don't run. That lets you put a good amount on both of the surfaces, and I can clean up the squeeze out with some alcohol on a paper towel. At the same time, the epoxy makes a little fillet at the joint. While the horizontal stabilizers are drying, I got to work on the cowl. I've already mounted the DA50, and I'll cut the cowl to fit the head. Because this motor is so big in this cowl, I need to get a special muffler from Bison Mufflers, and I'll be showing that in the next segment. You can see that the cowl is held in place by those four tabs screwed right into the firewall. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep doing it after we get the muffler installed. We'll just have to wait and see. If you recall in an earlier segment, we talked about their stupid idea of just looping steel cable through the steel control arms. I do enough dumb things on my own. I don't need to take their instructions to do another one. I'm going to use ball links at the end of a Sullivan cable kit because I know it works and it's not going to wear out and snap. And I can tweak these horns to make this easier. The ball links attached to the control horn with a 256 bolt. I'm going to drill and tap the control arms just to give myself another little level of security. Plus a lot of times if we tap the control horn like this, it's easier assembling these ball links. This is the pull-pull drive for the rudder. And once it's installed in the right place, it's just about impossible to reach. So I put the cables and it together first. I made sure that all the nuts and bolts are good and secure and there's Loctite on everything so I can epoxy this in place and not have to worry about pulling it right back out. Here I'm just checking the fit of the Dubro hinges that I used to replace the CA hinges that came with the kit. Plus I had to fit the control rod that actually operates the elevators. The kit came with a couple of pin type hinges but I added three roll bars instead. Here again, I had to drill and cut the rudder to fit over that control rod. I think this kit is supposed to be some low level of scale, so they don't want control horns on the outside of the surfaces. It is a cleaner look having all the controls inside, but it's a little more work as well. This is the only access for the rudder, elevator, and tailwheel pull-pull systems. And the tailwheel one isn't installed yet. Here I've got the tailwheel drive set up, and you can see that it's operated by its own set of pull-pull cables. The rudder's driven off the same servo, but different cables. And this is what I was talking about earlier, that once you put this in, it's not easy to get at. The throttle servo's at the top. Just below that is the rudder tailwheel servo, and then the elevator servo. I really can't finalize anything else right now until I get the muffler. Once I get the muffler installed, then I can find out where the rest of the wires go. And I gotta wait to put the fuel tank in until after that, because once this is in place, there's hardly any room to get up to the front anymore. And the main batteries are under the fuel tank. We want everything up front to try and help with the weight distribution. Because I'm starting to install servos, it's time to get out the receiver. I'm gonna use a Spectrum PowerSafe 9 channel receiver. And we'll plug this into a pair of 7.4 volt 5000 milliamp LiPos. This receiver comes with a safety switch that if it fails, it automatically fails to the on position. And it also comes with three satellite receivers all on different length cables. Now that I have all the pull-pull systems and the servos installed, I can install this cover. I thought about trying to camouflage this door somehow, but seeing as how it's the only access I have to all those pull-pull cables back there, just get used to seeing some screws in this thing. And then I can install the tail wheel. And this one actually came with the kit. I'm going to use different mains, but for now the stock tail wheel will work fine. And the last thing with the cover in place is to check and make sure all the services work the way they're supposed to. I've got everything set to full throws right now, but I might refine that later or at least put in some dual rates. I can't imagine this thing being very sensitive, but we want to be safe rather than sorry.
With any kind of luck at the end of the next segment, the Zero will be ready for test flying. <laughs> 